Two months ago, I made one of my favorite projects to date, the Eco Ball Riparian Jungle. I used a lot of different techniques to make that build possible, and many of you enjoyed it as well. Unfortunately, I gave little thought to filtration, and the water has become stagnant and putrid. It's not like I've been able to do water changes or maintain it either. I can hardly fit my hand through the opening, let alone a siphon tube or scissors. That's all expected though. I mean, everything that I make only lasts a few months anyway. Everything that I make only lasts a few months anyway. Wait a minute. So here we are, back again with another one of these. In this update, we're gonna take the two month look at the Eco Ball Riparian Jungle, and I'm gonna address a lot of the concerns that have arisen since then. The primary concern, and something that I see with a lot of these builds, is how am I gonna maintain this piece? I suppose that's partly because it's not something I really talk about too often, because it's actually usually the easiest part for me. I'll demystify that entire process here shortly, but there are a few other things that I wanted to address. Of course, I'm having fun with how I present all of this, but I will occasionally get comments like the ones that you saw about my projects not lasting very long. Now, I know that sometimes this is definitely coming from a place of general curiosity, and other times not. I definitely don't think I have anything to prove here, my catalog speaks for itself, and you've seen the type of work that I've put out. However, even though this is something I've discussed before, I should probably reiterate that a lot of these projects, I don't make them with the intent to maintain them indefinitely. In fact, a lot of the projects that don't include animals, I'll dismantle them immediately after the video is done. As much as I'd love to see every project displayed and up and running still, I just don't have the time or the space to maintain hundreds of these, and that's not the vision I have for the channel anyway. In addition to that, a lot of the builds that I dismantle are to make room for new and better iterations of what I previously made. Either way, I think it should be very apparent by the way that I construct my work that if the intent was for me to keep them all long term, then I would. Sure, there definitely have been some failures, and I think I've done a pretty decent job illustrating that on the channel thus far. Maybe we could circle back in the future and do an entire video on it, but I'll save that for a different time. Anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is that if I wanted to keep all of these builds indefinitely, I would do exactly that. My vision for the channel is to make cool stuff, have fun in the process, and inspire many of you along the way. I felt compelled to bring that up, but we'll leave it there and hopefully I don't have to address it again. There are other concerns that I'll address later in the video, but for now, I'll show you truly just how easy it is to maintain something like this. Occasionally trimming the plants is something that's involved, and I gotta do it right now. Sure, it might not be as easy as your typical aquascape, but it's actually a lot simpler than a lot of my terrariums. I could use something like my standard scissors for the job, but they're a little big. Something like these small ones will be much more appropriate for the build and are easy to use. Right now, it doesn't need much pruning at all other than removing a few of these dead sections up in the riparian area. And it's as simple as just snipping them and pulling them out. The bottom is the same exact process, but you can replant stems as needed. Now, I don't actually need to do it here, but for the sake of demonstration, I'll show you how it's done. Perhaps overlooked, this trimming process is a big part of how a system like this works. That leads into the next major concern, filtration. Many even saying that I didn't do filtration at all, which obviously isn't true. First of all, most setups don't need a 100 gallon sump or an FX6 canister filter to function properly. In addition to that, I would argue that many setups don't even need a filter to function properly. As I'm sure most of you recognized, I did put a sponge filter in the back of this, which shouldn't be overlooked. Sponge filters are a lot more effective than I think many people want to give them credit for. And in fact, I would argue that they're one of the best filters out there. That said, its workload is basically nothing when compared to the plants, especially what's going on above the water. These act like a sponge, absorbing nutrients and impurities from the water, which is what we use filters for. All of this is stored in the plants, but they no longer affect the livestock. Once you trim the foliage, these are removed from the system completely. From there, the plants continue to clean up the water in order to build new foliage, which creates a really nice loop. 
This all helps keep the tank clean, which leads into another issue that I saw which was about algae. Wiping off the glass is easy enough if it grows on it. However, the lack of impurities and nutrients in the water, which is ideal for the animals I should add, limits the ability for algae to reproduce. Lastly, the substrate itself is also a filter. Beneficial bacteria will colonize in it and work to keep things clean as well. So again, some giant filter is not at all necessary to keep a system like this healthy. The sponge filter is working, the plants are working, the substrate is working, and the result is a very stable system that creates a healthy environment for the animals. Water changes are also part of my regimen to keep a setup like this healthy. Although not as frequent as some other designs I have, I still do them and just like you saw with trimming the plants, it's very easy. All that I need for that is a bucket and my siphon tube. Now I don't gravel vac until a setup's usually about 6 months old or slightly older, so I'm not going to need that, I just need the tube. And just like any other setup, just stick the tube in there, get the siphon going, and just make sure that no fish get sucked up. Uh, with this, I just kind of keep it close to the glass with my hands next to it, and if anyone gets close, I can just kind of shoo them away before anything goes wrong. Like this guy. Before I fill it back up, of course I'm going to dose it with some ACCR since I use tap water, and I'll also add a little bit of trace to add some minerals back to the system. As usual, these were provided by Fritz Aquatics with a paid promotion. Filling it back up is probably the most challenging part of this entire endeavor, but what I found works is I'll kink the hose further down, stick it in the top and keep my hand close to it and just gradually release it and fill it up. This minimally disrupts what's going on in here and allows me to maintain control. After that, it's just a matter of going back and adjusting some of the floating plants. And cleaning off the glass with a microfiber cloth. And that's what's involved in maintaining something like this. Quite simple if you ask me. Now since I've set it up, I've only actually done four water changes thus far, including the one that you just saw, so it's pretty low maintenance as well. To act as though nothing has changed since I built it though, would be silly. First off, you'll notice that the bottom is not quite as dense as it was whenever I initially set it up. If I'll be honest, this was due to negligence on my end. Initially I was using a light that wasn't bright enough, so it could only sustain the plants above the water and some of the aquatics. I'm not trying to make excuses for myself, but I had a lot going on at that time, so I just left it as it was because I knew that the plants above the rim were doing the job on their own. I recently replaced it with an appropriate one though, which is why it doesn't look the same. I need to get a housing for it at some point, but this will do for now. As for the fish, I have a lot to say. First off, as I'm sure you could tell based on what you've seen thus far, they're doing extremely well. Since I sent them through quarantine prior to going in here, they were robust to start with and all of the initial stock is still alive. I love seeing them zoom around and it's funny how curious they are. I think they're the perfect fish for a container like this and that's why I intentionally chose them for it. In fact, I had the container months before I even did the build, but once I saw that these fish were available at my local fish store, I put them into quarantine and I immediately got to work. Since they're a small, docile, and slow swimming fish, they're perfect for nano setups like this. Not that I need to explain myself on this, but I will anyway. Pretty much all rice fish other than the daisies rice fish are extremely uncommon here in the US. So when I used the term rare in the title, it wasn't hyperbole. I know they're more common elsewhere, but here, they're not at all. And in fact, I've only ever seen them two times in fish stores, and I've bought them both times I saw them. I'm throwing that out there because many took it as clickbait, but these are actually rare fish where I live. A fair criticism that I got from a few of you is that you think this is overstocked. Considering all of the factors involved, such as the means of filtration or the nature of these fish, I personally would disagree. 
I think it's obvious the fish are doing very well, but if you'd like to make the case, I think it's a fair critique to be made. That said, as they breed and reproduce, I'm definitely going to have to remove some from the system to maintain an appropriate population. The last major concern was about the shape of the container itself. Typically, it's not recommended to keep fish in a round container. It's not ideal, but I think there's a little bit more to it than that. The connotation of a fishbowl probably immediately makes you think of a goldfish in a bowl. I know it does for me. That's not good for obvious reasons, but the issue with the bowl is often thought to be the distortions they cause from the fish's view to the outside. Now, this isn't a bowl per se, but it's round enough that you could imagine it would greatly distort the fish's view. I did some experiments with this, and when we take a fish eye view, we can see that the distortion is very minimal. To act like there's none would be foolish. However, based on what I see from the fish and the interactions I have with them, I would argue this has little to no effect on them whatsoever. Regardless, I think this is a very valid thing to bring up. In my mind, it's a situational concern that should be handled accordingly. At the end of the day, I suppose a lot of these concerns arise because I don't explicitly state a lot of these things, especially in regard to maintenance. It's something that I don't really think about because I'm focused on the build and all this stuff with maintenance. I'll do it after the fact and I don't film it. Moving forward though, I think I should mention at least a little bit as to what would be involved in maintaining and keeping up with a certain system. So that way, if I don't keep it long term, you'd still have a decent idea as to how you would maintain something like that. Anyway, I've enjoyed this project so much since I've set it up. As I said earlier, it's definitely one of my favorites and it's been so much fun to have thus far. I also hope this video clears the air on a lot of what I discussed previously. There is one more thing though. If you recall in the original build video I said, several months ago I stumbled across this incredible glass container. Now the story's a little bit long-winded, so I'll leave it there. The story behind how I got this is kind of crazy, and in my mind, it was basically fate. A lot of you seem to be curious about how I got it, and I wasn't originally going to talk about it, but I'll explain. So in the area that I live, there's a fish store that's connected to a restaurant. Now I don't know if there's any relation to the two, like if the people who own the restaurant own the fish store, or if it's just coincidence or what. But outside of the restaurant the one day, and this was, it was snowing at the time. There was snow and ice and all that kind of stuff. But when I originally saw this container, it was down in this huge bucket that was full of water and ice. But I was able to see about from here up and I could tell looking down, that's an awesome container. And I almost went into the restaurant and asked the people like, hey, what's the deal with that container outside? Are you willing to sell it? But I didn't have the uh, the courage or I didn't feel like asking them about it. So I just went into the fish store because that's why I was in that area, got what I needed and left. About three months later, maybe, I was driving through that area again. And on a whim, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if that container is still there. I'm going to drive by and if it is, I'm going to ask the restaurant people if I could buy it from them. So I got there, I take a look, sure enough, it's not there anymore. I'm like, dang. I guess, I guess I missed out. I should have asked for it when I originally saw it. But I went into the fish store and way tucked back in the back of the store, you see this thing on display completely empty for sale. And I want to say it was like 60 bucks maybe. So it wasn't really an unreasonable price for something like that. I grabbed the thing, took it up front. I said, I want to buy it. So <laughs> that's the story behind it. It was really cool because I, you know, after I didn't see it there, I didn't think I would actually be able to get it, but I'm so excited that I was able to get it because when you see a piece like this, it's, they, they, they don't come along very frequently. So you got to get them when you see them. And I'm really excited that I did. And I do believe that's a great place to conclude this update. I hope that you all enjoyed seeing the updated look at this build. I really like the progress of it thus far, but I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, leave me with a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and liked this sort of content, definitely do so for more and future uploads. And I think I'll end it there because everybody is congregating over here because they want me to feed them. So I'll do that. Until next time, Surfer Squad, take care and peace.